Hello, SVS. Hope you're all having a wonderful day so far. Let's start off with a bit of introductions, okay? My name is Patrick, and I'm part of the 226 program office here in West Torrance. West Torrance is located in what is commonly known as the South Bay region in LA County. The South Bay area is known for a wide array of sites to explore. From the hiking trails in Palos Verdes to the coastal beaches of Redondo Beach, there is so much to see within this area. How about we take this opportunity and check out an interesting location with a unique backstory. It's time to shine a spotlight on Terrenia Resort. Thank you. What thoughts come to mind when you think about traveling? Is there anything memorable you recall from your previous trip? Consider all aspects applicable when posed with this question. Do you imagine an opportunity to take in the nearby surroundings? Or are you more focused on the destination and all activities that accompany it? For many people, they would argue that the journey is just as important as the destination. Oftentimes, the act of getting to a destination gets sidelined in favor of reaching the end goal. While not uncommon, there's so much more than meets the eye. We could have taken the easy route and arrived at Terranea Resort with plenty of time to spare. However, we would have missed out on an opportunity to check out the scenic views that Palos Verdes has to offer. The route we are currently on follows the path of Palos Verdes Drive. Along this stretch of road, there are various locales that have unique treasures waiting to be discovered. From the rocky beaches that contain lively tide pools, to the expanse of hiking trails throughout the area, the greatest challenge one could face is deciding where to go within the span of a day. As Los Angeles' largest coastal resort, Terrania has plenty of amenities to explore whether you are a guest or casual hiker. Established in 2009, it boasts picturesque coastal views that are truly a sight to behold. With plenty of nature trails, there are endless discoveries just waiting to be uncovered. How often have you been to Terrania? I would have to say multiple dozens of times. What did you usually do around here? If I'm just here with my folks, we usually walk around, chat it up with friends. 
maybe go to a restaurant on the premises. You mentioned one time that uh, you used to volunteer here. What uh, what opportunities did you have here? While I volunteered here, I just arranged the ruler and I pulled the towels. <laughs> Not much, but I got to enjoy the food that they served to the employees. And that was delicious. You'd say one of the best foods you ever had? Some of the best food I ever had. Have you ever had cactus before? Uh, I have. Actually, my mom, she's Mexican. She was born in Mexico City. So, my my grandpa used to own the ranch. And we have to um to cut it. To cut the nopal. Nopal means cactus in English, Spanish. So, we cut the nopal the cactus and after that we cook it and we eat it. What do you usually have with it? Like what kind of spices? Pretty much carne asada, like barbecue. If you walk along the southern edge of the resort, there lies a trail that gives access to a wonderful ocean view. Near its entrance sits a structure that may seem out of place at first glance. Rust and erosion constantly batter this relic of a monument. Many don't even bat an eye to the monolith that's located at the crossroads of nature and luxury. However, there's quite a history related to this object. It's a tale that stretches all the way back to the 1950s, to a travel destination that once existed even before Ternia was ever conceived. me nine years ago. I've really changed a lot since then, and so is Marineland. They have exciting new shows, including the spectacular High Divers. Orky is the world's biggest entertainer. Marineland now has one of the largest and most fascinating exhibits of sea creatures. And Marineland has created the Baja Reef, where you swim with exotic fish past coral and plants. If you haven't been to Marineland lately, come down and share it with us. Marineland's the one. Share the ocean, share the fun. In 1954, the area that would eventually become Terenu Resort once held what was considered the world's largest oceanarium at the time. Known as Marineland of the Pacific, it became one of the pioneers of attempting to bring marine studies closer to the public eye. Designed by famed architect William Pereira, the park cemented itself as a symbol of 20th century art deco in the South Bay region. If his name sounded familiar, some of his other well-known works include the Transamerica Pyramid at San Francisco, LAX, and Geisel Library at UC San Diego. Marineland drew many inspirations from its East Coast counterpart at the time, Marine Studios, which attempted to be a mixture of studio space and research facilities. Once open, the 63-acre park became a major destination throughout the decade. 
Known for its performing orcas, a variety of sea creatures, and the progenitor of the swim-through aquarium concept, Marineland was a landmark to behold. The most famous animals on display were two orcas called Orky and Corky, the latter of whom is still alive, albeit by a different name. We'll get back onto that in a bit. Attractions like this were rare to come across at times compared to many of the roadside stops that peppered the US. Over 15,000 visitors came on opening day to see what this place had to offer, which eventually grew to nearly a million people walking through its gates by the late 50s. Besides exhibits, the park was used for a wide array of filming throughout its operation. With the surrounding beautiful landscape, it provided many uses throughout its tenure. Attack of the Crab Monsters became the first movie to be filmed on the premise. Other Hollywood productions include A-Team, Wonder Woman, Beverly Hillbillies, and The Six Million Dollar Man, just to name a few. Some celebrities also visited the park, such as Lucille Ball and Elvis Presley. With the popularity of the park, it saw much growth over the years. This included amphitheaters, tanks, and a 240-foot observation deck known as the Sky Tower. On a clear day, this presented visitors a visible view of nearby Catalina Island. By the 1970s, it had reached over 480 acres. Despite all the accolades Marineland received, you likely are wondering one major question. Why isn't it around today? The answer is very simple. Competition. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Disneyland is your land. Here age relives fond memories of the past. And here youth may savor the challenge and promise of the future. Disneyland is dedicated to the ideals, the dreams, and the hard facts that have created America. With the hope that it will be a source of joy and inspiration to all the world. Thank you. Marineland faced many rivals in the 1960s. Disneyland in Anaheim was already open for a decade, and SeaWorld San Diego had just opened in 1964. These locations dwarfed the size of the South Bay icon, which affected attendance numbers greatly. Over the years, the park would trade hands with various owners. Some included 20th Century Fox and Taft Broadcasting Corporation, which also held the rights to Hanna-Barbera Studios. In the 1970s, Taft sought to reinvigorate the park with a major remodel which included some of its IPs, including Scooby-Doo and Yogi Bear. This did bring back some tourists for a couple of years before ultimately putting up the land for sale once again due to staggering losses. Unfortunately, this is when Marineland would meet an untimely end. In 1986, the park was bought out by HBJ, the corporate owner of the SeaWorld theme parks. Despite promises to keep Marineland operating, HBJ decided to close the park after only three months of ownership due to so-called mounting costs. The sudden closure brought much ire in many of the local residents in Palos Verdes. In the middle of the night, many animals were trucked off the premises to new locations as concrete poured in the drains to restrict the chances of the location ever reopening again. Notably, Orky and Corky were eventually moved to SeaWorld San Diego, with Corky being given the name Shamu. Marineland would be left abandoned for nearly 20 years afterwards. Many facilities were left in decay, with many structures being sold for scrap over the years. While in disrepair, the air still provided much use for the Hollywood industry. Pirates of the Caribbean, Charlie's Angels, and Inspector Gadget utilized the area much of their film productions. It wouldn't be until York Longpoint purchased the 480-acre land to construct the Terrenia Resort we know today. Almost all traces of the park disappeared aside from a few exceptions. At the nearby Point Vicente Interpretive Center, it hosts a collection of memorabilia that once could be found at the park. This includes the bubble statue that once sat at the entrance gate. While Marine Land is no longer present, the memories it provided still carry on. One of the main tenets Terrenia holds is to provide a space for guests and visitors alike to enjoy a melting pot of modernity and nature. In the end, isn't that what Marineland also wanted to provide to its visitors as well? Let's catch up with the group and see what else this place has to offer then.
What you like about today? What I liked about today is just a fun little activity. See the ocean view, see the rocks, see the caves, and just overall just having a good time. Would you say you're an athletic type of person? I can say so. I mean, I try my best, but you know, it takes progress. What you say is your uh, what, you, what do you say is your favorite part of this uh, uh, of the hike? Burning calories. Mm. Burning calories. <laughs> How many do you think you you uh, burned today? Two thirty. Hey, nice, good job, man. What do you like about today? About the uh, Tyrrhenia Hotel. Do you like it? Yes. Why do you like it? Because it has pools to swim. Okay, anything else? Yes, it has some beautiful rocks on the beach. Really? Yeah. Would you come back here again? Yes, please. <laughs> uh, my favorite part is uh, you see the, o uh, uh, is the ocean and and lots of rocks everywhere in the ocean and, and we see all the cave here and and we and we, we walked over here and and we we do a lot of fun activities and we we um, we just see like everything everything islands I see Kowloon Island and 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 times of ocean so cool and then we see a seal a seal on the ocean and and that's how great activities do you like hanging out with your friends here yeah why do you like uh, hanging out with your friends here um like go, like go exploring like like go on like like someplace else mm. is there anything you want to say to anyone watching uh like i said uh th thanks thanks for doing activities together What do you say is your favorite part of the day? Um, my favorite part was recording activities, losing weight, and the most part is the beautiful view. Mm. You said you had family members before, right? Yeah. Which one? Your, uh, how often have you been here? Well, since my brother works here in Terranea, um, I've been here since. 2016. Does he show you around the place or do you just walk around while he's working? Uh, yeah. Um, he showed me around the place and it's beautiful. What specifically do you find beautiful about Terranea? Um, well, the beautiful, the hot resort. Um, if you want to see dolphins, there's dolphins. dolphins. Boats, 
food and uh, and uh, Fogata, which is a fireplace. Mm. Would you recommend coming back here again? Uh, yeah. Why would, you, why would you say that? Um, I like Terranea. Seven-tenths of our world is covered with water. In Los Angeles, there's a place that overlooks this vast frontier. A place of wilderness. A place of drama. Hold your breath. It's marine land. Plummet into global oceans teeming with life. Go eye to glowing eye with predators of the deep. Venture into a realm as intriguing as outer space. All a touch closer at LA's own marine land. Totally different exotic world that you can actually enter, see, encounter, touch, experience the captivating, the fascinating, the frightening, the utterly fantastic. Nowhere else can you be so close to so much wonder, and it's all so close by at Marineland. Overlooking the ocean on the beautiful Palos Verdes Peninsula, open Towns day. has whiskers and is the newest resident of Rancho Palos Verdes. And the answer is a baby walrus, of course, <laughs> who was born last night at Marineland. Proud parents of the walrus pup, if a pup can weigh 90 pounds, are 4,500-pound Woofy, the dad, and Priscilla, the mom, who tips the scales at a mere 3,500 pounds. The baby got lots of attention today. But our camera crew found it was difficult to get a close look at all three. Very protective, as you can see, and she won't let any of us get near it. We're not about to get near it. Uh, so it, it looks really good, and we're very uh, anxious to uh, watch the progress because she'll, the baby will grow up to be a 4,000 pound animal. <laughs> Cute little thing. Yes, Marine Land officials have not come up with a name for their whiskered bundle of joy yet, nor have they determined the baby's sex. As they said, mom's not letting them get very close. But. That's all right. One thing they do know is that the pup is very healthy and the seventh walrus pup born at Marineland, the home of the only two pairs of breeding walruses. In
everyone. Hope you all enjoyed the video. I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to showcase some interesting locations around the South Bay area. Hopefully we can come along with me and find some new ones along the way. If you have any suggestions, please feel free to leave a comment down below and we can take that into uh, consideration. Hope to see you all in the next episode!